my parents and I. My name is Luna Martinez, and I'm an only child from Albuquerque, New Mexico. My mom had me when she was 20 years old, and I've never met my biological father. She met and married the man I refer to as my dad when I was five, and they've been in an open marriage as long as I can remember. So now that I've got the facts out of the way, here's for the fun stuff. I've been described as direct. I've been described as confrontational. I have a very loud voice, and it gets even louder as I talk about something I'm passionate about, because that's the way the, room, because that's the, way the women in my family raised me to be. And I think it's really important to talk with people about the things that you like and the things that you don't like. I hope as my talk goes on, you'll understand a little bit more why. My parents modeled a functional and equally representative relationship to me in a very transparent way. So I always understood and respected that that relationship wasn't effortless. I want to be very upfront about the intentionality around my word choice today, and so I've defined the main definition here. What is ethical? What is non-monogamy? Also, I'm also going to be using the word relationship a lot in this talk. For me, relationship is interchangeable through all kinds of different ways, whether it's romantic, non-romantic, through workplace and your colleagues and coworkers. So when I use that word, I want us to think about all of the different ways it can be used. And I don't know if it was my parents' intention to rub against a traditional family unit, but I'd like to think I'm better for it in other parts of my upbringing. Trust and communication you'll see at the bottom of my slides because they're the two tenets of my talk. I believe that my parents modeled this for me through their relationship with each other, their ability to trust and communicate with each other, and their ability to trust and communicate me trust and communicate with me throughout my upbringing. So you'll see it at the bottom, and I hope you see and understand how they tie into the rest of my lessons. Lesson one, it's about giving people a choice. My mom explained this to me as everybody needs to know the rules of the game. That looks pretty different around a lot of different arenas. So let me talk about my experience. I started gaining my own independent thoughts around relationships in middle school. I went to a Catholic middle school, which it may be a little interesting because my parents are in a non-monogamous relationship, and they also identify as atheist. So how did I end up there? <laughs> my mom grew up and went to Catholic school, and the caliber of education seemed to be a little bit of a better option compared to the public school in Albuquerque. And I was understanding the Catholic beliefs around the heteronormative monogamous marriage structure. One woman, one man, for a lifetime. So I started understanding these things and believing these things as well. That's how I made my choices in relationships with boyfriends around that time. And then I went to public high school, which is a bit of a culture shock between Catholic middle school. And I continued with that heteronormative thinking. I got myself in a little bit of trouble in that a lot of my boyfriends in high school cheated on me. I wasn't able to, and I can only speak for myself, I wasn't able to understand what I wanted or express why I wanted it. All I knew is that I needed to be with one person and it was going to be forever. And better understanding looking back, that may not be as realistic as I thought it was. And as I kept getting hurt, I get confirmations that way. So giving people a choice looks like setting up those boundaries and expectations so that you come in with your eyes open. You know the rules of the game, you know how to play. And with that, I once again rubbed up against how society was telling me I should be monogamous. I should be with one boy. It should be for my lifetime. I was looking for marriage. And I would go home, and it didn't look that way. And it was great because my parents engaged me in conversation every day at the dinner table, in the things that we believed in, why we believed in it, and that it's okay to be different. With that, I also found it created a space for my friends to come into that zone. And something they expressed to me is that they felt the same way. I always knew when I came to your house, we were going to be talking about something. There was no topics off limits, and there was no sugarcoating to be found. 
And that's really good, thinking back on how my parents were giving us a choice at that time to decide whether the things that we believed were true to ourselves, true to our upbringing, and true to the people that we wanted to be. And this lesson really is the hardest one for me to remind myself of, because when you give people a choice, you get to take off the ownership of self. You get to say, those people's choices are not a reflection of me. I'm not responsible for the things that they do, and even if it looks like it's directed towards me, I'm not that important. <laughs> I'm really important, but the actions that they have are their expression, and they don't define me. And that's really awesome when I can remember to do it. <laughs> when I'm not spinning my wheels about how I'm personalizing things that people say to me, or the way that they're acting around me, that I know they may be going through something, and that all of the negative energy they're sending me really doesn't have to do with me. That's what, looking, that's what giving people a choice looks like. And when you can name your boundaries and expectations up front, to continue to reap the benefits is to create evaluation periods. That relates to our next lesson. Lesson two, people change over time and circumstance. With growth and knowledge and experience, we as humans develop. That's what makes us pretty neat as multicellular organisms, I think. And with that, we have, I'd like to think we'd all have experience with the development of humans through our school, being around people of different ages, and we focus a lot on categorizing the time before 20 years old. We've got infancy, we've got childhood, we've got adolescence, we've got a lot of subgroups within that. We've got a big blanket of adulthood for about 30 years, and then we're later in life. And there's still so much going on in that 30 years, and we're truly developing from the beginning into the end. And so why aren't we giving that same kind of grace to relationships? Why aren't we allowing that space to hold and change and develop? Because that's a pretty beautiful thing. After different stages of our lives, we're able to reinvent ourselves and find even more beauty in our lives. And an example for me is when I was in middle school, it was one man, one woman for a lifetime. In high school, I get, kept getting these confirmations of, I am trying so hard to invest in others, in one other person, and why am I not investing that in myself or investing that in my friends or other people in general? It's such a formative time. And I would come up against my parents and I thought that they didn't like my boyfriends because I was losing dependence on them. Or they didn't like my boyfriends because they didn't like his car or things like that. And looking back, I wonder if it was more about that level of investment and why I could have managed that a little bit better, or how I could have managed that a little bit better. So from going to middle school, one man, one woman, high school, kind of getting confirmations that maybe that's not the vibe, and in college realizing that everyone was expressing themselves in a whole lot of different ways, and that I could too, so that was pretty neat. And it wasn't until recently that I don't know if one man or one woman is really for me, and that I'm just looking to be authentic in that. So when we're able to give grace to the, to the relationships around us, we can better know ourselves and better know others. And that relates to our next lesson. Lesson three, knowing yourself is the best tool for relationship building. I've shared a lot of my perspective throughout this talk, and I can credit that to two really big things. Having those probing conversations with my parents at the dinner table, and them challenging me and providing a space where we can believe different things and engage in respectful discourse around it, and the fact that they empowered me to tap into professional counseling for more than half of my life. It's a huge privilege for me to be able to say, I have parents who are willing to talk to me about things and not force their beliefs down my throat, and that they want to create even more reflection space through a professional lens. I, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for those two things. And I can't credit that enough to the space that I held. And 
with that, I also had some more accessible resources, um, such as learning about attachment theory. So attachment theory, very generally, is the way that children are developed and the way that they're engaged throughout their development can be predictive of how they connect with other adults as adults. There's four attachment styles, and only one of them is categorized as secure. And to me, that says you can be in that camp, and that's pretty cool, but that most people aren't in that camp, and that's also pretty cool. And it's a really great way for me to check the pulse on where I'm at to say I'm on the journey to security. And every time I choose to live authentically, choose myself and um, check in with people on those relationships, I get even closer to that security. And so over time, I, I check in with that and see when those things are changing. And um, as I develop, it gets more and more interesting. Another way is through love languages. There are five love languages. And most people resonate with all of them, but the ranking varies person to person. So for me, my top love language is words of affirmation. I like to be told in words that I'm loved or valued. I learned this lesson pretty heavily um, with a partner who's, after several years and fights later, I learned how to top love language of acts of service. So what that looked like is, I was feeling insecure about why this person clearly didn't love me because they didn't tell me as much as I told them. But what they would do is clean off my car after it snowed, or they would put hot water on for me if I was up working late to set up some tea for me. And I didn't realize that they were absolutely showing me affection and that they did love me, but they just didn't give it the same way that I did. And that's okay. So with that, I am incredibly grateful for the opportunity to be growing and developing and changing and to have conversations with people around me. Statistically, it's predictive to come out with some pretty cool stuff. So when you know your preferences, you can ask for them up front. When you ask for them up front, you can give yourself grace to change your mind. And all the, all the way through that, it's through knowing yourself. And I've got some resources here that I've personally used. Um, and I encourage and support you all doing your own exploration um, to find how you can better yourself moving forward. Dr. Elizabeth Sheff is a researcher, one of the very few researchers of children who have been raised by polyamorous parents. Polyamorous being a term um, within the relationship spectrum uh, with multiple partners, similar to non-monogamy, but not the same. And she does longitudinal studies about the effects and impacts of children growing up in those environments. And so if you're a relationship person or a uh, research person like I am, um, that, that would be a great resource. Love languages, like we talked about, there's a book and a quiz Attachment theory as well, uh, lots of academic journals and a quiz about your attachment styles. I've listened to a bunch of different podcasts um, to kind of confirm and deny those beliefs the way that I talked about before, as well as professional therapy. This QR code can link you, uh, connect you to the links for these resources I provided. And I want to wrap up by saying that you all are worth it and you are valuable, so you deserve to learn more about yourself to live more authentically. Thank you.